from the foothills of the Smoky Mountains, Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. 77 degrees as the Auburn Tigers. This is the first conference game for Auburn. Easy victories over Texas and then Kansas. The Auburn football defense has given up only three points. So the Tigers are awesome, ranked third in the nation, but definitely untested thus far. You can bet on this. They will be tested today here at Neyland Stadium. Pat Dye and the Tiger Tigers remember 1985 when they came in here ranked number one and Tennessee surprised them. Pat Dye said, we will not be surprised today no matter what happens because we know Tennessee is for real. The Volunteers, winners in the kickoff classic over Iowa, easy wins over Colorado State and a relatively easy conference opening victory over Mississippi State played down in Starkville. But now the Volunteers home and ready for the big game the conference opener for Auburn and Tim Foley when we analyze this game the first thing you got to talk about is that awesome Auburn defense they are just really strong and they've got depth at every position uh, talking to Walt Harris I asked him where you think about it where you're gonna attack them and he looked at me and I don't know you've, you've seen them haven't you where would you attack them because they've got all Americans at three positions Tracy Rocker Andre Bruce Kevin Porter in the secondary and just they're just tough Tennessee's defense does not look as awesome on paper, but it's a very good defense and very different. They've been injured up front, and that's been a little bit of a weakness for them, but uh, I think Mark Hovannik and Brian Hunt will be back, and they have been a big, day, uh, big play defense so far this year. 11 turnovers for the Tennessee defense. Now gone are Fullwood and Jackson and Cribs and Brooks and the great Auburn tailbacks. This year, it's kind of a who's going to play tailback. Well, they've got three good running backs, a young guy that can really haul the, haul the, the bread and Harry Mose. He's got a lot of speed, but really they're throwing the ball more, and they're throwing it very effectively. As we mentioned in the opening, they've got the number one rated passer in the country, Jeff Berger, and I think uncharacteristically, they've got five excellent wide receivers. And both coaches feel the kicking game could be very important today, particularly in the kickoff and punt return game. We'll be back here for the opening kickoff in just a moment to Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. This series began November 10th, 1900 at Birmingham, Alabama. Auburn won that first game 23 to nothing, and they lead in the series 21-16 to 1. Auburn has won four out of the last five meetings between these two teams. So Tennessee will have Dirk Borgannoni kicking off to this man, Freddie Wagan. He is one of the best punt returners in the nation. This is the first time he's been back to return the Auburn kickoff. Deceptive speed. Wagan can't corral the kickoff, and it'll be a touchback. Auburn will bring it out to the 20-yard line, and this ball game is underway. The man under pressure, the nation's leading passer, Jeff Berger, but the man under pressure is James Joseph, the tailback. Will it be Joseph? Will it be the other backs back there? Stewart, Danley, Moe, who's going to carry the load for the Auburn running game? They have great wide receivers. Stacy Cyril, one of the best offensive linemen in America, playing with a broken hand and also a slight ankle strain. We'll see how he fares today. From the 20, first down, 10, Tigers. Berger's opening up with a pass. And it is complete to begin this game to Walter Reeves, the tight end. A gain of about eight. The defense for Tennessee. Opportunistic is the best word to describe these volunteers. The defensive line, Johnson, McCray, and Hobby, may be better with the backups, Hovannik and Hunt, who are back from injuries. Kelly Ziegler, the leading tackler and a spiritual leader of this team, and a great big play man, a world-class sprinter, Terry McDaniel. He is number 86, playing on the corner. On the second down, Auburn runs for the first down with a fullback, Reggie Ware, out to the 32-yard line. Bob, in the opening, we talked about the pass, and I don't want the people out there, there to get the feeling that Auburn has somehow become uh, air die. They're using the pass as a great counterpunch. They still run the football, but they've just been more a pass, uh, effective passing the ball than they've ever been. Well, Everett's a little strong. Pat Sullivan's on the sideline. He was pretty effective for him throwing the ball a few years ago. First and 10 from the 31. the tight end again up to the 38-yard line. He was hit by Kelly Ziegler, the senior linebacker from Miami for Tennessee. A gain of eight yards, and Ziegler, the leading tackler on this team. Gets out of there in a hurry. Obviously, first down, he's looking for the run, and he responds well to the ball in the air as Mike Kelly comes up and helps put him away. Second 
second down, three Tigers. Joseph, first down to the 44-yard line. Auburn mixing it up. Pass for about seven or eight, and then the run and Johnny Majors. He is second in seniority in the Southeastern Conference. He's been here at his alma mater for 11 years now. And Majors knows that if he wins this game, he's got an excellent, excellent shot at the SEC title because they really have their only strong contender left for him is Alabama. First down 10 from the 44. Auburn started from their 20 after the Tennessee kickoff and into the end zone for a touchback. And Kelly Ziegler doesn't like what he sees. Tennessee calls a defensive timeout here as the Tigers have reached midfield. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Auburn is moving the tight end before the ball is snapped. And uh, as you can see here, the tight end moves and it causes the defensive line to shift shift down. Hobby is pushing McCray down and shifting Cooper out. Kelly Ziegler, the quarterback of the defense, knowing the importance of every play in a game like this, doesn't want any mental errors, so he calls a timeout. Let's get on the same page, fellas. We have 13.23 to go in quarter number one, along with Tim Foley, Bob Leo from Leland Stadium in Knoxville. First down, 10 Tigers from their own 44, the opening drive for Auburn. to the running back, James Joseph at the 50-yard line. Berger has thrown three passes, has completed three passes. He leads the nation in passing efficiency. And they've all been on first down, Bob. Obviously, it's a poker game between Ken Donahue, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee, and Larry Blakeney and Pat Sullivan, who are responsible call for calling the plays for Auburn. And uh, I think that Auburn's trying to throw them off track now. Throwing the ball three times on first down. I wonder how far you'd have to go back in history to find that for these guys. James Joseph, big hole. First down. They'll spot it right near the 40-yard line. Tripped up by 33 inside linebacker Keith DeLong. And number 10 just gained 10 yards. See Reggie Ware, number 36, and Stacy Dunn. Gets an excellent block there on Kelly Ziegler. Walls him off, and Joseph almost breaks it. The difference between this Auburn team and last year and the years before, Fullwood might have been gone on that one. Bo Jackson might have been gone on that one. Now, Vincent Harris, 21 and 10. James Joseph in the backfield for Auburn on first down from the 41-yard line. Berger, no pressure. to Joseph again. And he gets to the 34-yard line, and Tim Foley. We talked last week in the Florida-Alabama game about the importance of first down yardage. And here on every first down, Auburn has got more than the four yards. They've had six, seven, eight yards. I think sometimes, Bob, defenses are more for, uh, they're more consistent in their in their uh, tendencies on first down. Tennessee's been playing zone on first down, playing safe, playing cautious. Auburn just running little circle patterns, looking downfield for the deeper route, but if it's not there, quick to get it to the back. to the 15-yard line. Tackled by Andre Kramer, a gain of 19 yards, and Auburn is looking as awesome on this opening drive against Tennessee as Auburn looks against Texas and Kansas. Here they come. Full of the slot, great lead block by Vincent Harris, James Joseph turning up field, getting what he can get. Now you're going to see Tennessee come after him. Tennessee has four tailbacks. We'll probably see them all today. Jimmy Harper, our SEC referee today, the official microphone with a problem. You see the rest of the crew for the Southeastern Conference officiating group here today. It is a penalty. The legal procedure against Auburn moves it back to the 20 and makes it tough when you get in here because now it is first down 15 from the 20 and not much room to operate. What Auburn likes to do down in this area, they're not different from a lot of teams. They like to run the fade.
Cuts off the block of Jeff Berger, sits down. Cooper comes over and makes a tackle. Hillman is probably, though, the best receiver over and once he's got the football in his hands. jacket you see with his arms folded was Pat Sullivan, the Heisman Trophy winner from Auburn. Has had a lot to do with the success and the evolution of this passing game. He and Larry Blakey. Number one, you see standing there, is Brian Schulman, the Auburn punter. Interesting story. Schulman had been a walk-on at Tennessee. Tennessee went with their punter, Garmin. So Schulman is back in here punting against the team he wanted to play for. Here's the 52-yard attempt by Wynn Lyle. Plenty of leg. It's good. This young man beat three scholarship kickers out of the job, and now you see why Auburn takes the lead on the 52-yard Wynn Lyle field goal. And remember the first period in this game very big since 1978 the team that has been ahead at the end of the first quarter has never lost since 1978 930 remaining in the first Auburn has drawn first blood They've been fairly successful in their first two games in the first quarter They've led in scoring 42 to 3 in their first two games So they have not really been in a 60-minute football game yet And I know that's got to be a minor concern for the Auburn coaches Staples. Harbert coming across. 
across the middle. Cheatham letting them go. Finds the open area. The ball thrown high, but you should have caught that one. Now, Staples makes the interception. Second interception of the year. He's taking the place of Sam Morris. We talked about the importance of turnovers. Palmer gets the first one. James Joseph penalty markers down. Joseph goes to the 32-yard line. Tackled by 33. Keith DeLong. So Tennessee getting a taste of their own medicine on that particular play. Tennessee ranked high nationally in the turnover giveaway ratio. Auburn doing pretty well themselves, but as we said, they haven't been tested yet. Well, they're getting tested today, and so far, Auburn has an A. There you look at the comparison between Auburn, a plus three, and that's certainly not bad, but Tennessee, plus seven. Now, that's updated for Auburn. That's plus three after that interception. The penalty takes Auburn back to the 44-yard line, holding on the call. Now, from a Tennessee standpoint, here's where you have to stand in there. One of the important things is once the offense gets some momentum from a turnover, you have to get out there and take the ball away from them again, keep them off the board. Don't let the thing get out of hand early. First down, 15 Auburn from the 44-yard line of Tennessee following the Greg Staples interception. Not much that time, about three yards for Curtis Stewart. Still outside the 40-yard line. 8.37 to go in the first period. Auburn leading 3 to nothing on a 52-yard field goal. Auburn had driven to the Tennessee 15, but thanks to a penalty and good Tennessee defensive plays, Wynn Lyle, the 18-year-old freshman kicker, had to try one 52 yards away. Now second down 12 from the Tennessee 41. Auburn in the spread formation. Tried to get it out to Scott Bolton, the senior from Theodore, Alabama, at the 35. Third and 12. We talked about the receivers from Auburn as we watched Scott Bolton here running just a little sideline pattern. They had Curtis Stewart heading up the seam in case of a two-deep zone. They thought they could get one in over the top. But Tennessee is going to give Berger a lot of different looks. He did not see much in practice because Auburn always lines up in a double zone, and the teams they played thus far have played a man-to-man -man and three deep, and that's it. Auburn with receivers all over the field on the third down and 12. Look at this! Berger goes down at his own 38-yard line. Oh, my! The center is sophomore John Hudson, a 20-yard loss. Once, as we say so often, the only time the offensive center will get recognition is on a bad snap or a fumble. John Hudson certainly got some there. A tremendous loss for Auburn, taking them. They had started this after the interception return at Tennessee's 39. Now they're back at the Auburn 39. Here's Shulman, the putter. Average is 42 yards. Kramer is back to get it. Great game time. Kramer, fair catches it at the 21 yard line. Auburn leads three to nothing. Tennessee just dodged a bullet, folks. 7.20 to go. Quarter number one, you're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Obviously, this is always a big conference game with Auburn and Tennessee. Uh, a lot of people think this year it may even have more significance uh, uh, because Tennessee's got a shot. Because Tennessee only plays Auburn and Alabama and Ole Miss in the top group. I know what you're saying. Kentucky's playing pretty well right now, and, uh, but uh, I think it's I think it's more important for us than it is Tennessee because we've got to end our season playing Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. <laughs> Not to mention Florida State. I was putting it to Pat like uh, you know Tennessee gets by you, they have a pretty easy road. Pat, without saying it, he understood exactly what we were talking about. If Auburn gets past Tennessee, Auburn's still looking at a meat grinder. William Howard, Keith Davis in the backfield for Tennessee. This pass is complete. It is to Davis. First down to the 33-yard line. Keith Davis, the junior from Nashville. Edward Phillips with a tackle. Reggie Cobb, Davis was playing for on that play, is the redshirt freshman everybody's talking about here. The receivers for Tennessee are good, but not as good as Auburn this year. You can't say that very often. Tennessee often thought of as receiver university. A solid offensive front for Tennessee. First and ten from the Volunteer 33. Francis. It's a nice catch out at the 42-yard line by number five, Thomas Woods. 
beautiful catch by Woods. And Francis saw something he'll see a lot. You're going to see Andre Bruce getting picked up by William Howard. And he'll be in Jeff's face all day long in passing situations. Nice catch. Good extension. Way to get your feet down. Now, opportune time for Tennessee. Second down, short yardage from their own 42. Auburn leading 3 0 during the first quarter. Terrence Cleveland, everybody overthrown. Alvin Briggs, number four for Auburn, was back there all the way. Let's look at this great Auburn defensive team. Tracy Rocker, a first-round NFL draft choice. You can bank on that. Benji Roll and Nate Hill are also good, and Stallworth off the injury is back to play some. Andre Bruce, people, people compare him to Cornelius Bennett from Alabama. He's 6'6 and speedy. And Greg Staples, the man who stepped in for the injured Sean Morris, and he's the man who had the interception early. First down, volunteers. William Howard, the fullback, number 35. And Howard last year had 84 yards against Auburn. He may play a bigger role in this game today. And I think you're right, Bob. I think they're going to have to do some. They're going to have to do some damage inside. Bruce is going to be hard to get around. They've got an excellent secondary. Tennessee strong up front. They're going to have to take advantage of that inside running. Three receivers for Tennessee, but they give it to Howard. 240 pounds inside Auburn territory to the 47 or 8 yard line. 39, Kurt Crane, the Auburn inside linebacker with the stop. And I like the line in the paper, Tim, about William Howard. He said he's like a, a big Cadillac sitting in your driveway with a big V8 engine and full of gas. And it's only been for a trip around the block. Maybe it's time to take him on a long drive. <laughs> of course, he led the SEC in uh, scoring last year, and he's tough and close, tough in those short yarded situations. Second down five. This time, that is short yardage, about one yard. He was hit by Brian Smith and Tracy Rocker. 74, Tracy Rocker, the junior from Atlanta. And he's been a starter since he was a freshman. Good heads-up player. As a matter of fact, as a freshman, he led the SEC in tackles for a down lineman. Seven sacks last year, and he's as good as they come. Legitimate All-American. Francis in trouble. He gets the first down. Andre Bruce chased him down. Francis takes it to the 39-yard line of Auburn. Francis certainly not known for his running, but he scrambled out of trouble that time. Jeff Francis really emerged last year as a quarterback that could take control of an offense. And Wall Harris was really proud of his development. And if you're an offensive team with Auburn. If you get past one of those great down linemen, you're looking at Bruce, Crane, Phillips, Mitchell. Those linebackers are excellent also. Staples and Cheatham will send you to Dennis in a hurry, too. You know, they'll rock your molars to the Dennis. Second down, seven from the 37. Here's Cobb, the freshman. Inside the 35 to the 34, Brian Smith, the left outside linebacker. You talk about depth. Brian Smith would be a starter for about anybody in the nation at 6'6", 250, and he's fast at the outside linebacker spot. They are really impressive. Uh, both of us on different days, eight at the training table at Auburn, and just looking around at those folks. They've got a stable full of great athletes there. Third down three, Tennessee, from the 33. tripped up the quarterback. Auburn doing a great job of covering the receivers, but leaving the opportunity for the first down run open. You see the linebackers come up in there. Ed Phillips was blitzing, trying to get some extra pressure. Auburn had not blitzed this year to date. They hadn't had to. There's no sense in taking a chance if you don't need to. They're going to have to try to get some pressure on Francis. They've always been able to do it with Bruce Rocker. Line, a gain of about 
shot five, let's call it. 3.17 to go in the first quarter. Auburn leads 3-0, but Tennessee on the drive. Major's talking to Doug Matthews there. Headset on. Reggie Cobb, Charles Wilson in the backfield for Tennessee. Wilson is 32, the senior fullback. Out wide to Harper. Auburn plays it well, but Harper makes a couple of good moves. Doesn't get a lot out of it, though. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe a little more. Nate Hill, number 99, with a stop. And they'll throw that play to the side of Andre Bruce. Want him to rush, throw it in there behind him. The key for the defensive backs on that particular operation is the offensive tackle. If he starts running out toward him, they better start hitting him because there's a lot of traffic in a hurry. Andre Bruce, the most valuable player in the state high school tournament. He's a great athlete. Third down six. Tennessee has completed three third down conversions. was tackled by Tracy Rocker. Tennessee converting on third down against this Auburn Tiger defense. Try to neutralize the strength of Andre Bruce here. He comes across, and he's the reader in this case. Got the pitch man. He should have forced the pitch and then taken the pitch man. Walt Harris kidded about running the option, and uh, you know, I just smiled at him. He can throw the ball, but he's really not nimble of foot. But they did run it seven times against Colorado State, and I think they just wanted to show it. And they're not going to use it often, but they just want the defensive coordinator, Wayne Hall, for Auburn, to be concerned about containment. 117 to go, quarter number one. Auburn leading 3-0 on a 52-yard field goal. Tennessee in field goal territory now. It's the 15th play on this drive. Second down. the quarterback Kevin Porter along with a host of white-shirted Tigers who blitzed in from the defensive left side. Kevin Porter switched right at the last moment. Good disguise by the secondary from Auburn. Cheatham went over and took his man. Staples backed out. Porter came clean. Francis wasn't able to get out of there in time. Both teams have come up with big quarterback sacks when uh, defensively when the offense got inside the 20-yard line. Now Tennessee pushed back for the third and 16th. Auburn had one in a similar situation about 30 minutes ago. Andre Bruce offside. Francis running. The whistle sounded before the play started. Bruce was in Tennessee territory. That guy saying, what happened there? We'll find out in a moment. Jimmy Harper, the man in the white hat, uh, you'll see it in the striped shirt in the white hat. <laughs> The other white hat is worn by Pat Dye, is our referee today. And here comes the signal. His microphone not working due to uh, some microwave interference, as I understand, from our crack technical team. So we'll just interpret for you. Offside, Auburn, five yards, 93 on Gray Bruce. Bruce concerned about his alignment, lined up wide on the left. They kicked him inside and uh, lost his concentration. What you don't want to do is beat yourself. You don't want to make mental errors in critical situations. UT started this drive with 7.20 left in the quarter. It's down to 12 seconds remaining on third down. Francis running out of there again. Dives to the 12. Had to get to the seven yard line for the first down. So it'll be a field goal situation for the volunteers. In will come Phil Rich, the junior walk-on from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We'll try the field goal when we return. That's the first quarter. Tennessee will begin the second quarter.
quarter, trailing three to nothing, but with a 29-yard field goal attempt from Phil Rich, who is five out of seven on the year. Didn't even know he was a scholarship player until after he hit the game winner in the kickoff classic against Iowa. He was a walk-on kicker here, but he's been doing very well, as you see. Perfect on the point afters and five out of seven on the field goal department, and his long one of the year was 45 yards against Iowa. This one will be from the right hash mark. It's a 29-yard field goal. Holder for Tennessee, number 12, backup quarterback, Randy Sanders. It's no good. Hooked badly to the left. And the kicking game has already played a big part. A 52-yarder from the Auburn freshman and a miss from Bill Rich. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Neyland Stadium in Knoxville on the banks of the Tennessee River. 93,500 are here today along with yours truly and Tim Foley. Tim, Tennessee had that football seven, nearly eight minutes and came away with nothing. What's the significance of that to the Volunteers? Obviously, you want to score points, but I think they've got to be encouraged about their ability to move the ball against this very, very tough Auburn defense. First down, 10 Auburn. From the 20. Screen to Wigan. Good moves and great speed. But he doesn't get past the pursuit of Tennessee. He gets about seven or eight out to the 27-yard line. Bryant Hunt, 74, with the tackle. Wagan with deceptive speed. He's not only got the moves in hands, but the burning speed, too, according to Pat Dye. First quarter statistics story. Both teams, turnovers. Turnover, but uh, it, was, it was harmless. Both teams on offense playing very well, playing according to their game plan defensively. Both coordinators trying to figure out exactly what's going on to them, and they'll adjust now showing the stats they've shown early. 27 yards passing, only six running the ball. Nothing this time for 21, Vincent Harris, the sophomore fullback. He'll bring up third and about three. One of the things to mention on that opening pass to Wagan, the first down play, that was a lateral. And you would just as soon not have that be a lateral. If it's that way, if it's dropped, Wagan drops the ball and it's a lateral. Now it's a fumble. It's a live ball. Tennessee can take it and score. Auburn still, if you'll notice, the three and the zeros on the bottom there. Auburn still has given up only three points all year. They lead the nation, obviously, in scoring defense out of the wishbone formation. James Joseph broke the tackle, got the first down. It was James Joseph with second effort to get the first down for Auburn. They had him stopped at the 27 or 28. James Joseph might be their most complete back. He blocks well, catches the football well, and is a hard runner. Ziegler takes him out in the hole, but you notice Joseph maintains his balance, keeps his feet moving, and both he and uh, Curtis Stewart are good after-contact runners. First down, 10 from the 30-yard line. three yards off the right guard spot hit by Keith DeLong. I want to bring that statistic up again I mentioned a little while ago. Since 1978, in this series between Auburn and Tennessee, the team leading at the end of the first quarter has won every game. Auburn leads 3-0. How long did it take you to remember? <laughs> Four days. I don't think Pat Dye knows that. And if he knows it, it's not comforting, I can guarantee you. Second down, seven. First down, out to the 38, hit by DeLong. DeLong with four tackles today. He's the junior from Lawrence, Kansas, number 33 for Tennessee. One of the inside linebackers along with Ziegler, Darren Miller, and Mike Kelly of the outside linebackers. DeLong's dad, an All-American here at the University of Tennessee, Steve DeLong. They talk about the Auburn running game. Don't get the feeling they limped in here. Both Vincent Harris and Harry Mose are averaging over six yards a carry. Three Tigers. Stewart, no, he does not get it. Tennessee was there. He lost a yard or maybe more on the play. Brian Kimbrough, 55, the man for Tennessee. Kimbrough in there backing up Mike Kelly. They alternate in on one of the linebacker positions on the outside. Auburn leading. 
11.31 to go in the first half. 77 degrees here in Knoxville. Schulman with the cannon shot. Kramer from his 10. No protection. Takes it up the middle. Gets a few yards, but not much. Down at the 17-yard line. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Well, that's going to make Tim easier to get along with today. At least for the moment. On the first down, the pass goes incomplete. Intended for tight end Nate Middlebrook. So Purdue with a lead over Notre Dame, Tim. Cheer up. It's looking good for the Boilermaker. Yeah, it is. It we're is. nervous that's over there. Real good. <laughs> I don't want to put that score up. As long as we're ahead, put it up. That's all right. It'll be second down 10 here for the Tennessee Volunteers. From their own 17-yard line after a 54-yard punt by Brian Schulman. So the special teams, we said the kicking game would come into play here, team, and it's been significant already. Well, Tennessee misses a chip shot. Auburn nails a 52-yarder. And Schulman boomed that punt, which backed Tennessee up. Making a difference. Second down 10. Maybe a yard. Robert Goff, number 98 from Bradenton, Florida, the senior for Auburn, making the stop. Auburn with depth. They're too deep in virtually every defensive position with quality players. If you run away from Rocker, you're running into Hill and Bruce, and if you, uh, Goff and Rowan both do an excellent job at the nose guard position, and it's tough to throw in a secondary. So it's going to have to be individual effort by specific people on the offense that generate some big plays for Tennessee and working it inside. Tennessee's been successful on third down conversions, but this is third down eight. Let's see. No, down at the 10, coming right up the chute is 98 Robert Gaunt. Loss of nine yards. And now Tennessee's going to have to call on their punter to get him out of a hole. See Goff working on the center. That's just miscommunication right there. I thought, I think Todd Kirk thought he had some help to the right, but the right guard, Bruin, had turned out. Nobody there, sack. Bob Garman averages 43.3 yards per punt. Tennessee gives up only about four and a half yards on the punt return. But number 14, Freddie Wagan, returns it on an average 26 yards a pop. Fair catches this one wisely. It's inside Tennessee territory at the 41 and a half yard line and only a 31 yard punt by Schulman. As you can see, we're back. Because of momentum, the referee didn't call a timeout on the commercial break there. And they tried to go to Wagan deep. And that's one of the reasons they don't take the commercial break because after a good opportunity sometimes, a team likes to come back and strike quickly. That's what Auburn tried to do to Wagan. They handed the ball to the fullback. He hit up into the line and then flipped it back to Jeff Berger. And Jeff, Freddie Wagan is the surest handed receiver that Auburn has. Joseph flips it back wide open as the Tennessee defense had attacked Wagan drops the football. You won't see that happen often. Second down, 10, Auburn from the 42-yard line following the punt from Garman of only 31 yards. Incomplete. Tennessee stripped it loose. Was intended for tight end Walter Reeves at about the 37. It'll be third down, 10, Auburn. Cedric Klein keyed the play for Tennessee. Number 30, the sophomore from Loudon, not far from Knoxville, his hometown plays like that, you got to take advantage of them when you have the chance. I can remember playing Seattle and watching Steve Largent fly by me on one of those, right? but the quarterback didn't put it on the money, and so, you, as you mentioned before, you dodged a bullet. Third down, 10 Auburn from the Tennessee 42, 42-yard uh, line. Berger, what a time! Incomplete, he wanted to get Lawyer Tillman, and Berger overthrew Tillman much in the same fashion as Jeff Francis did on the Tennessee first play of the game but Tennessee does not get the interception. Tillman can't handle it. You see him working against McDaniel there. He turns him over to the inside, and the Tennessee linebackers had not done a good job, had not gotten much depth. That ball should have been completed. Shulman winning the kicking battle here. Garman with only a 31-yarder. Shulman handled the low snap well. He's going to try to get this one to drop inside the 10. Called a pooch kick. out of bounds by Auburn at the five-yard line, and that's where Tennessee will take over the ball. Knocking it out, number 41, Quentin Rogers is the man it hit off of, also near the play was 23, Perry Reed. 
prior to going out of bounds at the five. So it was marked dead at the 11 yard line. First down, 10 Tennessee. Here's Cobb. He hasn't been able to do much so far today. He squirms for about four this time out to the 16. Auburn has had the ball inside Tennessee territory twice, Tim Foley. And the first time they lost 22 yards. The next time, this previous possession, Auburn was unable to gain any yardage at all. And I think you have to give a gold star to Ken Donahue and his Tennessee defense. They've come up with the, with the plays and they've had to. And they were also thanked to Lady Luck because on that play game drop pass. Second down five. Close to the first down goes William Howard. They'll stop him about the 20. He's going to be a yard and a half short of the first down. So Tennessee will have a third down short yardage situation with 8.36 to go in the first half here at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. Auburn leading 3-0. These two teams have really been sparring early. There's been a turnover, but nothing came out of it. Tennessee had the opportunity to tie, but missed a chip shot 29-yard field goal. Freshman 18-year-old kicker for Auburn, Win Lyle, hit a 52-yarder. And other than that, it's been a case of uh, Auburn dominating in terms of field position, but Tennessee's defense dodging the bullets. Cobb doesn't get it. Andre Bruce with the stop. You see why people think Auburn's defense is possibly the best in the nation. You just can't beat them head up. See if they can blow them out of there. And you're talking about a strong Tennessee line. Did the ball come out? Looked like the ball came out in that replay. I see. Here's Wigan. Average is 26.6 yards per punt return. with trouble. Gets a Tennessee bounce, though. What a fortunate break. Wigan wisely got out of the way, and look at this ball roll. To the 18-yard line. 62 yards on the punt, and Garmin barely hit it. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. 7-12 to go, second quarter. Auburn leading 3 to nothing. a 62-yard should have caught it, Tim. Couldn't really get to that one. Bad kick, but he got it on the first hop against Kansas and went 69 yards. He slipped as he tried to field that one. Stewart. Down at the 16. Hit by Keith DeLong. Number 33 for Tennessee. Let's watch Keith DeLong here. Here, Ken Donahue takes a chance. The guard is supposed to pick him up. Instead, he pulled out. Nobody got to the long, and it's a three-yard loss for Auburn. Puts him in a second and long situation in this part of the field. That's not where you want to go. Six minutes, 42 seconds to go for the first half. Auburn, second down, 12 from their own 17. And now the crowd noise. Stewart, hit by 45, Darren Miller, the Tennessee linebacker. Right at the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. Talked to Pat Sullivan before the game, and uh, during practice they tried to prepare for this closed end of the stadium here. Crowd noise, and they have all their reserves stand around and yell and shout and scream and try to create as much commotion as they could to try to prepare their players to hear the audibles in the situation. Auburn only one out of six on third down conversions. It is third down ten from the Tigers, 18. Berger puts it up long. Tillman out of bounds, incomplete. Auburn is now one out of seven on third down conversion. Good quarterback pressure by Mark Hovannik. Berger may have had to put it up a little bit early, and now Schulman comes in to putt with his back to the end zone. Pat Sullivan in the orange jacket uh, was in business in Birmingham, I believe. Brought him back as a coach, and I think we're really surprised with his effect. Tennessee rushing 10, Auburn defends it well. The punt, Kramer, is 45. Kramer inside Auburn territory to the 49, and Tennessee gets their best field position of the day, a 37-yard punt, six-yard return. You know, in talking about Pat Sullivan, I don't want to...
people to misinterpret what I'm saying. He's a great player, but there's a lot of great players that don't make good coaches. But he's come in there, worked with Jeff, Jeff Berger, and taught him some fundamental things in terms of setting up and delivering the football, and also taught him some things about how to think, how to uh, react to the things that he sees on the football field. We'll be right back to Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Great pictures being provided today by our fine TBS sports crew, Ron Sutton. Timmy Jones, you see there in the picture, high above the field here at Neyland Stadium. First down, 10 Tennessee. Here's the pitch. To the 40-yard line, Reggie Cobb. Eight yards on the pitch for Reggie Cobb. That's his best gain of the day. Now you can see why defensive coaches' hearts start to throb when this guy's got the ball. Bruce, Bruce forces the pitch. Quentin Riggins tries to get there. Cobb runs through it. He's just awfully powerful for as fast as he is. Second down one, Tennessee. They hand off to Charles Wilson, who gets the first down for the Volunteers to the 38 of Auburn. Auburn leads 3 to nothing. Five minutes to go in the first half. Now, there's different kinds of running backs, Bob. There are, there are power backs, uh, which are tough to tackle because of the physical punishment they dish out. And there are backs with great quickness, but once you get your hands on them, they come down easy. The problem is when you got a guy that's as quick as Reggie Cobb is, but also powerful. He's kind of like an Earl Campbell. You know, if, if you dig in against him, he'll run around you. If you don't dig in against him, he'll run you over. Cobb with 24 yards rushing thus far today. First down, 10 volunteers. for the first down at the 27-yard line to Thomas Woods. He was hit by Alvin Briggs, number four for Auburn. First down, Volunteers. Francis is going to read this from the inside out. He's got a little curl in the middle. Linebackers get good depth, so he decides to go all the way. That is a long ball to throw, and it was right on top. First down, 10, Volunteers. of about three. We talked about Tennessee's difficulty in getting outside Auburn on the running game. I guess it's tough either in or out. <laughs> yeah, but look at this pursuit. Look at all that meat looking lat moving laterally. Here they come. You know, Roland wraps them up and uh, he doesn't take him long to get a bunch of help. Reggie at that point is trying to find the ground. Second down 10 from the 27. Number four, Cleveland to the left side. A short drop. Finds nobody. He's back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Tracy Rocker will get credit for the tackle. And once again, Tennessee now having trouble finding an open receiver as Auburn's just playing very good heads-up defense. Just man-to-man, -man basically, all the way across the 11-man front. You know, they play. They play three deep, but they played a little tighter underneath. And uh, that time, there might have been some, some confusion in the call because Francis was ready to throw it, but nobody was ready to catch it. Third down 10. Tennessee stalling inside the Auburn 30. Francis on the pitch. This is Keith Davis. Nowhere to go. Maybe a yard. Auburn's defense playing superbly inside their own 30-yard line. Now Tennessee's Phil Rich is coming in to attempt another field goal. He missed a 29-yard attempt previously. They are going to spot this one. Let's see, seven yards from the 27 will be about the 34. It'll be a 44-yard attempt by Phil Rich. He missed the 29-yarder. Sanders the hole. This is a better angle for Sanders. A right-footed kicker would prefer kicking from the left side. from the Auburn and Tennessee band. Both are here performing today. So a big field goal attempt miss by Phil Rich. Watch Pat die in the background there in the white hat. Phil is making some people happy here. Phil missing a 29-yard field goal attempt. And then a 44-yard field goal attempt. 
Auburn leads three to nothing on a 52-yarder by the freshman kicker from Auburn, Wynn Lyle. On the first and ten. It is complete to Lawyer Tillman to the 44-yard line. Auburn getting out of their own end zone now with 2.20 to go in the half. In what I've seen, this is Auburn's favorite pattern. Fake the sprint draw. They've got the tight end dragging across shallow. Tillman coming in about 20 yards deep. And Alexander Wright, you just saw his head fly through your screen, was going deep. And Wright can fly. They've got to respect that speed. Auburn first down. Tigers 45. Mark it at the 44 yard mark. also had one sack. We weren't sure if Mark Hovannik was well enough to really play significantly today. Uh, but I'd say significant is a good word for his play. I, you know, as long as I've been watching Tennessee football, Mark Hovannik has not been well enough to play. He's always had a, a physical ailment. Shoulder, he had that repaired in the offseason. More recently, it's a knee, but he always seems to come through in big fashion for him. Second down, 12 over now from the 43 yard line. of midfield to about the 48. It's going to bring up a third down and long yardage situation. Kelly Ziegler with his fourth tackle. And Berger's going to call timeout. Auburn had two remaining. Now one remaining timeout in this half. Jeff Berger came into this game leading the nation in passing efficiency. He is 7 of 13 for 57 yards today. And Reeves has three of those catches for 21. Be sure to join us next week when TBS Sports presents SEC football from right here in Knoxville again as the Golden Bears of California and the Pac-10 invade Neyland Stadium beginning at 12.30 Eastern time. Superstation viewers catch pregame coverage with college football grandstand at 12.15. Well, we said, Tim, you and I both thought it'd be a low-scoring game. Who knows what the second half holds, but it's 3-0 Auburn here early on, and we're watching two very good football defenses play on this field today. This, is, this, this might be the best Auburn team that Johnny Majors has faced, simply because it doesn't have a superstar. And the Pat Dye seemed different. He seemed much more relaxed without carrying the burden of that Heisman Trophy pressure around, his team bearing that burden. This is a group of players that are good athletes. There are a lot of great athletes on this team, but there's no one that's standing above the rest that you have to keep happy and make sure he doesn't get out of shape. He's got a much more balanced football team than he's had recently. Auburn only one of eight on third down conversions. This Here is they third come. And six. Penalty marker down. Let's see. They say the forward progress is to the 45. That would give Auburn the first down, but let's check the penalty marker. One minute remaining in the half. It's going to be pass interference against Tennessee. Jimmy Harper, the referee. Again, I remind you, his microphone not working today, so we'll just interpret his signals for you on the official rulings. Defensive holding. The biggest difference in that is the defensive holding happens before the ball is thrown. It'd be interference if the ball's in the air. McDaniel bump and run on Scott Bolton. <laughs> Got him hooked. You can jam them. You can use your hands like that as long as they're in front of you. When they get to your side, when they get parallel with you, now you're going to have a problem. The official is there with the flag. A good adjustment by McDaniel. Good jam. But once you hit them, now get off. First penalty for Tennessee today. 54, 53, clock ticking time in the first half on first down Berger. Over the middle, complete to the 35-yard line. Auburn has one timeout remaining should they choose to use it. They've called two plays in the huddle. It's a hurry-up offense. They want to get in to win Lyle field goal range, and if his first kick has anything to do with it, all you need to do is be at about the 30-yard line. Auburn is near there with 30 seconds remaining in the half. Berger doesn't like what he sees, and we have a timeout on the field. It's charged to Tennessee. Tennessee call the timeout. Berger goes over for a conversation, as does DeLong for Tennessee, with 32 seconds to go in the first half, and Auburn leading by a score of three to nothing. Johnny Majors, he's been around a long time, 11 years at his alma mater, second in the SEC in seniority to Vince Dooley. Tw Vince is way too young to have been at Georgia 24 <laughs> years. Pat Dye's third in seniority. Barbara's much too young for Vince to be at <laughs> Georgia 24 years. You know what that says to me? The the fact that uh, after Vince is 24, the, the fourth has six, Cleveland has six years. 
the pressure of coaching in the Southeastern Conference, holding your job here five years, is tough. It's a meat grinder. There's so much, uh, there's so much competition recruiting players uh, be because there's so much tradition in the Southeast. And uh, not that fans aren't demanding everywhere, but uh, they might be a little bit more demanding down here in the Southeast since everything in Tennessee today is orange. You know, the leaves haven't turned, but that's about the only thing that's not orange in Tennessee. Well, look at this one. Purdue in the second quarter. Tim Polk. How about those boilers? Hang on. Second down four. Auburn Berger with about a 15-yard drop. It's a screen to Harris. Tennessee read it beautifully. Harris down at the 38. Clock down to 18 seconds. Still ticking. Down to 15 and 14. Thus far, Auburn has not chosen to stop the clock. This could be the last play unless Berger just throws it incomplete. Only five seconds. Now he calls timeout with a line of scrimmage at the 38. That would be a 55-yard field goal attempt should they decide to do it. And when Lyle hit a 52 earlier, there's five seconds remaining in the half. And Auburn leading three to nothing. Uh, if you're Pat Dye, you got to consider the field goal opportunity here with only five seconds. Yeah, the way the kid hit the last one, yeah, as long as they're across the 50. I don't think he is, however. Berger talking on the sideline. With five seconds remaining in the half, it has been a defensive struggle. Both defensives have played very, very well. Both of them had had the opportunities to give up the touchdown and the field goal. And Tennessee's kickers missed two opportunities, or Tennessee could be leading 6-3. But in terms of touchdowns, really only one threat, and that was the long pass after the short punt by Tennessee that Berger threw into the end zone intended for Wagan that he couldn't hold on to. And here comes number six, Win Lyle. He hit a 52-yarder. I think you have to feel Lyle's got a better chance than just running five receivers down the field and throwing it up in the air. Given Dye has seen him hit it in practice, hits it well, he's proved that one of the concerns had to be coming in here. He'd never kicked in front of a crowd like this. Obviously, that didn't shake him up much. I think he likes showbiz. A 55-yard attempt for the 18-year-old from Auburn. The only walk-on player I ever heard of who drives a Mercedes. Got the distance, Bob. Oh, my! Win Lyle, 55 yards! The clock ticks down to zero, and that's going to lift the Auburn Tigers because in a defensive game, they know their guy can get it done. We'll be back in a moment. The lead in this game by a score of six to nothing. It is an old-fashioned SEC defensive game. Tennessee averaging just over two yards a crack rushing. Auburn only about one. Tennessee's thrown for 34 yards. Auburn for 60. It's just a defensive battle. Yeah, and I think it's exactly what we expected. Two good defenses going against each other. And as you see as we go into these uh, into these highlights, they're not necessarily highlights, but they're what has happened in the football game up until this point. You see Tennessee's defensive line begin to move right before the snap, trying to confuse Berger, disguise the coverage. Auburn came out throwing the football on first down. Little zone pattern. That's a play pass. Reeves crossing. Joseph hooking at five yards. And that's what Berger's had to look at. He's been effective throwing the football. Came back. Tennessee had one drive, 16 plays. And the Jeff Francis made three consecutive first downs in passing situation. Good pressure by the offense, uh, uh, defensive line of Auburn. But Francis just found a way to get past that first yard marker. And that's been the story. It's as, e if it, it's as even as you can get. 75 total yards for Auburn, 86 for uh, Tennessee. And it should be 6-6, six to six, but two missed field goals by Tennessee, and that's the story. And we said that the kicking game would play a big role here. It already has. Watch for that to also be significant in the second half. We'll be back here to Neyland Stadium in Knoxville in just a moment. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. thousand five hundred at Neyland Stadium a beautiful afternoon for football in Knoxville Tennessee on the banks of the Tennessee River 80 degrees now as we're ready to begin the second half of play Auburn leading six nothing on the strength of two 50 yard plus field goal from freshman kicker Wynn Lyle Tennessee's kicker Phil Rich who up till 
today's game had been very consistent. Five out of seven has missed two, a 29 and a 44-yard attempt. The Alka-Seltzer Plus first half stats. You see that Auburn's had the ball a little more than Tennessee, but everything's pretty even, Stephen. One turnover. Tennessee's Jeff Francis threw an interception, but Auburn did not capitalize on that. Auburn leads here, as we say, six to nothing, and both of these teams have had their opportunities, and the field position has been kind of an interesting story. The first half possessions, it's hard to tell exactly what to say about it, Tim. First of all, Auburn's. And Auburn had two excellent opportunities early in the game, but Tennessee's defense uh, answered the bugle, and they knocked them out of there. One time drove them back 22 yards, and the other time kept them off the board. And Tennessee had some opportunities also, particularly the last time they got it to Auburn's 48, but missed the field goal. Another time, Tennessee had a, had a big, long 17-play drive, and then the missed 29-yard field goal. Of course, I'm sure one of the things Johnny Majors told the Tennessee Volunteers at halftime is, hey, your one play, a touchdown play, and an extra point conversion away from the lead, despite the fact that we've missed scoring opportunities. It's 6-0 Auburn. And Reggie Cobb will stand at the three to take the kickoff from Chris Knapp of the Auburn Tigers. The second half is underway from Knoxville. Cobb at the eight. Down at the 20. Number 43 making the hit was Lamar Rogers, a 13-yard return. So Smokey, the blue tick hound, I'm sure had his own pep talk at halftime. He's under pressure today. He got the towel around his neck. Get the oxygen out for Smokey. He's one of those dogs I like. This is a dog that doesn't perspire. perspire. Smokey sweats. And he's a good football mascot, you know? Like a line, a line, honorary lineman, Smokey. First down 10 from the 21. Tennessee trailing 6 0. Opening play in the second half. Tennessee's got the best offensive line in the SEC. So 
tell you about Auburn's front. Now Phil Rich, who's missed two field goal attempts, one from a 29-yard line, or from 29 yards away, and the other from 44 yards out, is in to attempt another one. This one will be 51 yards. The long for the year for Rich is 45 against Iowa. He's hit the first two very badly. Tennessee has called timeout again. Randy Sanders called it. That's two timeouts already early in the third quarter. Tennessee, and this will be significant, mark this down in this close ball game, has one timeout remaining for the rest of these two quarters. They had a problem in personnel there. Simons just went out, and you don't know what might have occurred. A chin strap, a shoulder pad, something happened, and uh, it's certainly unfortunate and something that doesn't make Johnny Majors happy. Scoring touchdowns for Tennessee becomes a lot more critical. You know, they, they probably felt comfortable with their field goal kicker going into the game, but sometimes it's just like if you've got a uh, if you're a basketball coach and you got a player that can hit it from anywhere, and all of a sudden you come out and he's not hot today. It's just not his day. That doesn't mean Phil Rich isn't a good field goal kicker. It just means that right now he has found his motion this afternoon, and hopefully for Tennessee fans, he'll discover it here. They'll forgive him if he hits this one. again off again life of a kicker he's a goat in the first half Phil Rich comes out and hits this 51 yarder and now for the moment he's all forgiven good job by Sanders getting the ball down now look at Rich he doesn't want to look <laughs> he's listening for the roar of the crowd Yahoo take this burden off my shoulders <laughs> Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Phil Rich, the walk-on kicker for Tennessee. So the scoring has been all from the kickers. 6-3 Auburn, 1328 to go third quarter. Look at the kickoff by Borgannoni, but Wigan elects to return it. Mistake. He's down at the 17-yard line. Tripped up by number 10, Vincent Moore. Now, I say mistake because of the result, but if you're Freddie Wigan, if you're Pat Dye, I think maybe I want him running it. The other thing is Wigan dropped the touchdown. He let a ball hit the ground and bounce for 30 yards and a punt. And so he's feeling now like, I want to make something happen. I got to do something right here. So he might be pushing a little bit. Auburn, first down 10 from the 17. To the fullback, Reggie Ware. He takes his 240 pounds out to the 22-yard line. Reggie's a senior from Huntsville with the stop for Tennessee. Tennessee's played six different defensive linemen today. Hovannik, Hobby, McCray, Hunt, Cooper, Johnson. Time remaining in the third quarter. Three-point game. Auburn six, Tennessee three. Second down five from the 23. Ware tries the quick opener. He's short of the first down to the 25. It'll be third down, about three. Ziegler and DeLong making the stop. And Auburn has had problems on conversions. Only two out of eight on third down thus far today. Scoring summary, not much to it. Lyle hits a 52-yarder. Lyle hits a 55-yarder. It's 6-0 at halftime. And now Rich from 51 makes it 6-3. And obviously what's not in the scoring summary is the missed opportunities by Tennessee. Here's that Neyland Stadium noise. Penalty markers down. Where? First down. Out to the 38, but the penalty markers are at the line of scrimmage and in the Auburn backfield. It looks like James Joseph may have moved. That's a, that's a guess on this one. Looked like there was movement in the backfield. his football at the University of Georgia. It was James Joseph there that moved, and I think the crowd noise got to him a little bit. You'll see him right on the wing there, number 10. Whoop, just a little bit too soon. That's going to cost you five yards. Pat, Pat Dye was a captain of the Georgia football team. Coached for nine years at Alabama, an assistant for Bear Bryant for nine years. Actually worked for Ken Donahue 
And now defensive coordinator for Tennessee. Third down eight from the 20. Five defensive backs for the Volunteers. Berger, plenty of time. Todd Kurt, 66, 76, Harry Galbraith, Kevin Simons, lead blocker William Howard. William Howard comes here, cleans up. Carlo Cheatham coming over, try to make the stop, couldn't get his head in front, couldn't wrap him up. Reggie Cobb runs through for his fourth rushing touchdown of the season, and they're going to learn to love him here in Knoxville over the next three years. And everybody was talking about Leroy Thompson, the great high school back who went to Penn State. Well, they're not talking about him much in Knoxville now. Reagan bobbles the kickoff the 20 yard line for Auburn trailing 10-6 and now Auburn is really has two problems one is they trail in the game but Auburn now is going to deal with a fired up crowd of 93,500 in Knoxville we talked about the offense playing conservative staying close trying to run it inside waiting for that opportunity that this defense may eventually give them the opportunities that the defense has given them in the past whenever they've been good. Peppers comes up with the interception. They take advantage of it. This Auburn football team's got heart. Let's see how they respond. The fullback to the 24-yard line. Vincent Harris, the sophomore fullback. And you noticed a moment ago the statistics about who has the most yardage. We've been talking about Auburn's awesome defense, but Tennessee has been playing tough. Watch them again. They actually gave up fewer yards in the first quarter. As you see, Ziegler and Long hustle them to get there. They try to keep those fellas free. They keep the front three moving around, trying to grab offensive linemen to keep Ziegler and DeLong 
moving laterally. Second down six from the 23. Quick handoff to Harris. Hit in the backfield. Down he goes. It's 77. Richard Cooper with the stop for Tennessee. And Cooper beats Stacy Searles here. See it right in the center of your screen. He just stands up, Stacy. Stacy's got that problem with the hand, the broken hand. He's got pins in there, and there's a lot of pain. And in frustration, he kind of jumps on Richard Cooper. But Cooper has got the potential to be a great player, He's trying to develop more consistency in his play. Time remaining in the third quarter, 9 minutes, 10 seconds. Tennessee leads 10-6. Third down, 6, Auburn. James Joseph gets the first down. Big run by James Joseph. He dives forward to the 31-yard line. Ziegler with his sixth tackle of the day for Tennessee. So Auburn keeps the drive alive. And Joseph has 47 yards on the day in six carries. Coming into this game, Joseph had only 42 all year in two games. And he's gone almost the whole way. Scooby Stewart's played in there. We haven't seen Harry Mose yet, and he's Mr. Electricity in this Auburn backfield. Here's Joseph on the pitch. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Dives forward for about one. Knifing in from the defensive backfield, strong safety, number 30, Cedric Klein. You know, I talked to Kevin Steele, who's the coach of the defensive backs about Cedric Klein and of course he had his first start against Iowa and made several plays like that and I thought it was rather aggressive blitzing the safety as much as they did and said we, we didn't blitz him he just he just does a good job reading the run and gets up there second down nine from the 21 Auburn trailing 10-6 now midway through the third quarter Berger completes it to Harris out of the backfield Harris goes out of bounds near the 44 yard line Made the play on 86, Terry McDaniel. That was a gain of 12 yards. And Auburn moving the ball. They started at their 20. This is the first time this year that this particular Auburn team has been behind, obviously, after having had the first touchdown scored on them all year, just moments ago. But this is a veteran team. They've got good players, solid players. They fought back in the past, and that's what they're doing right now. First down, fullback, Reggie Ware. He drives hard. He was hit at the 45 and drives all the way out to the 50. David Johnson finished him off for Tennessee. And he's a 240-pound plow horse right there. You give that rascal the ball, and uh, it's painful to get in his path. We talk about the great tailbacks in the Southeastern Conference this year, and there are a bunch of them. How about the fullbacks? Reggie Ware, Vincent Harris, uh, Willie McGrady at the University of Florida. Uh, Tennessee's got a couple of good ones themselves. And Howard, and freshman Roland Cole, big truckloads. Harris, no, Ware. Ware to the 49, short of the first down. Reggie Ware, the senior. He's from Huntsville, Alabama. You see Tracy Rocker there. Benji Rowan, number 96. We mentioned before they'd had two fairly soft opponents. They put their first few opponents away early on. This is the first time that Auburn had to play 60 minutes of football. They're a well-conditioned outfit, though. On third down three from the Tennessee 49, Ware driving for the first down to the Tennessee 45-yard line. DeLong was his eighth tackle of the day. These Tennessee linebackers have been, we said at the beginning of the game, they are they are keys in the sense that if you run inside, they're the men in position to have to make the play. Mike Whitehead, David Johnson come out. As Ken Donahue is rotating those down linemen, giving them a break. Like McCray, no, Cooper and Hunt came in. First and 10, Auburn from the Tennessee 45. Tennessee leads 10-6. Berger, it's complete to Lawyer Tillman at the 30-yard line. First down, 15-yard completion. Ziegler with the tackle. Lawyer Tillman back for his first action since having a deep thigh bruise. It's a tough play for linebacker. You see Ziegler, number 49. You see that play action. Now turn around and run, Kelly. You try to back up out of there. You're never going to get enough depth. You know if there's play action directly behind the center, someone's going to be crossing over the middle. They're trying to suck up those linebackers. Good catch by Tillman. From the Tennessee 30. Harris 
quick opener to the 22. Give him eight. Mike Kelly with the tackle. Auburn, a very poised veteran drive after giving up the lead for the first time in the ball game to Tennessee on the Reggie Cobb touchdown run. Auburn took it at their 20, and they have methodically rammed it down Tennessee's throat. But how many times have we seen the Tennessee defense bend inside the 20s? Let's see what happens here. It's at the 22 of Tennessee, second down Auburn. 11th play of the drive. Double tight ends for the Tigers. Joseph with the first down for the 18-yard line. See, this is the thing that Pat Dye is familiar with. Uh, the last half of his stay at Alabama, they went to the wishbone. He carried it to East Carolina, where he turned that program around, went to Wyoming. They had a winning season out there, brought it to Auburn, and he's used to this three- and four-yard stuff. Uh, he doesn't get in a hurry. He gets behind. He knows he's, he's, he knows he's got the ability to come back. He's patient. From the 18-yard line of Tennessee, first down, Auburn. Where? Near the 15-yard line. Not much on first down that time. About three yards. A play that most teams like to run on, run down here is that sprint draw fake the sprint draw, try to get the flanker down the middle, try to get one receiver at least into the corner somewhere. Interesting, Auburn on this drive, 10 rushing plays, two passing. Auburn has been a passing-oriented team thus far in 1987. Second down, seven. Joseph broke a tackle, gets to the 10, about a yard and a half short of the first down. Tony Nelson with a stop. Now, we talk about Joseph not being a fast tailback. He certainly has the nice move, as you saw there. Good off-the-ball acceleration. You're going to see Keith DeLong run through there. 33, runs through, just can't make it. Got to get your head in front. It's awfully hard to break the momentum of a back as strong as Joseph. Watch DeLong. He's coming on the snap. Coming underneath. Almost makes the big play. Third down two from the 10. Full house. Harris. Scrambling close to the first down. He was hit at about the nine, but I believe Harris scrambled forward far enough to get the first down. There may be a measurement. First down Auburn. They spot the ball just inside the eight-yard line of Tennessee. First down goal. Tennessee leading 10-6. In the first half, neither team could score a touchdown. Here in the third quarter, Tennessee scored, and now Auburn knocking at the door. Wagan splits wide to the right, double tight ends, out of the eye, Joseph, and fullback Ware. Ware to the six. Wagan's their best receiver down in close. He's the best receiver they have when the ball is in the air. Great body control. He made a one-handed catch against Kansas on a fade that was just a remarkable grab. He's got the athletic ability, and he, he's got a good understanding of the concept of pass coverage, and he's got the ability to get open down there. Working against Perry McDaniel here. Most folks know is Tennessee's number one defensive back. Second down goal from just outside the six. Joseph on the sweep. Has nowhere to go. Look at his second effort inside the five. To the four-yard line, where it will be third down goal was hit at about the six and a half. So they've had such great running backs at Auburn. It's all of a sudden you get someone with average ability and, you, and, you, and your bottom lip is sticking out. <laughs> you pout. There are some teams that would love to have the running backs that Auburn has, but they're used to Brett Fullwood and Bo Jackson and James Brooks. Third down goal from the four. Tennessee defense backs to the wall. Tennessee leads 10-6. Open. To Joseph, touchdown, Auburn! That was Joseph's first touchdown reception. Defensively down here, the thing you're concerned about is somebody getting picked. They bring Duke Donaldson in motion. You see him in a collision with a, a volunteer player. That's the guy that was supposed to be covering James Joseph. Auburn with the lead, 
Lynn Lyle for the point after. He's been perfect on the season so far. Is perfect again. And it is 13-10. Auburn by three with 155 to go in the third quarter. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Duke Donaldson, number 29, has actually come back in motion waiting for the snap count. And his job is going to be to try to work his way back across the field, supposedly. Actually, his job is to screen off number 45, Darren Miller, who's supposed to be covering number 10, James Joseph. Duke Donaldson does his job. Touchdown. James Joseph catches only the third pass of that drive. It was for a touchdown. It was all running. 14 running plays, three passing plays for Auburn. Now, if a, an official thinks that was deliberate, he's supposed to throw a flag. You know, that's offensive pass interference. Turned in heavy traffic out to about the 28-yard line. Auburn has regained the lead. They led six to nothing at halftime. Tennessee stormed back, got the touchdown, took the lead. Now Auburn with a beautiful drive. Well executed, methodical, powerful 17 plays. Of the 17, 14 were running plays, keyed by the running of Ware and Joseph. And eight, eight minutes and 25 seconds of the silent crowd as Auburn just worked its way down the field. Taking this crowd out of the game is really an important aspect of it. From the 27, Tennessee, first down 10. Francis screens it to the right side. That's Terrence Cleveland. Cleveland about five. Tennessee loves to get it out to the receiver. The problem is the man they really love to have catch that ball, Anthony Miller, is still hurt. This is a play that has made Tennessee a lot of yards over the last several years. Quick screen to the flanker. Look at Brian Smith out there. How'd you get here that fast? In the 6'6", six, six, look at him move. And that's what you got to do. You just got to pursue. You gotta pursue like a wild man, because when Cleveland gets the ball, anything can happen in a hurry. Second down five, Tennessee from the 31. They go to Keith Davis. First down and more to the 42, Keith Davis. The senior, who's now in the role of relieving the freshman, Reggie Cobb, with a big first down run for Tennessee. Great job by number 98, Robert Goff, closing the trap. Now, Keith Davis senses it's not inside and pops it upfield. Both of these teams, offensive coordinators, have inspired their offensive teams because Auburn with that 80-yard drive and now Tennessee looking as though they're on the move. And Tennessee just used its last timeout. That will come back to haunt the volunteers. You can count on it. With 51 seconds to go in the third, Jeff Francis calls the last Tennessee timeout. We're going to our studios in Atlanta now for this college football update. An update on Gory Lockbaum from Holy Cross. He comes out of the backfield, gets the pass from Jeff Wiley, then finds his way into the end zone. His 26th career touchdown, it is by reception. This is 28 to nothing. Gordy Lockbaum, the Heisman Trophy candidate from Holy Cross. Back to Bob and Tim. Old-fashioned college football game here in Knoxville. Auburn 13, Tennessee 10. But, Tim, I don't know when I remember a game of this importance when the when a team has used up their timeouts this early. I'm really not sure if they're having problems with communication with the signals or they get to the line of scrimmage. Tennessee's called so many plays from the line of scrimmage. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Whatever it is, they didn't get it worked out. Fumble, and it's recovered by Auburn. Nate Hill falls on it. Tennessee in a state of offensive confusion the last two plays after having moved the ball well. Just totally out of sync with Cobb. Never does get the ball in that situation. Jeff ought to just wrap it up, go down, give, give up. Hang on to the football. Hang on to it. I guess Cobb tries to take it from him and it ends up on the ground. Second Tennessee turnover this ball game. A fumble and an interception. Auburn had the ball on two occasions in the first half inside Tennessee territory. Didn't score on either one of those occasions. Let's see what they do here, leading 13-10. Here's the reverse. Pass. It's a flea flicker. It's Donaldson. Incomplete. Almost picked off by Tennessee at the seven-yard line. It was Terry 
McDaniel who read it well and came up to get it. Donaldson with the fake reverse and then the pass. Tillman heading down the middle of the field, now back out toward the sideline. It wasn't there. And when it's not there right away, the best thing to do is tuck it down now and see how much ground you could make. Way to get up, McDaniel. Here's Tillman. Cuts down to the inside, trying to play possum, but McDaniel's a sharp player, and he smelled it and is in great position here. I mean, he's 50 yards down the field. Old Duke's got to have quite an arm to get it down that far. Second down, 10, Auburn. blocking about seven yards for Harris Klein with the stop you know the maligned Auburn offensive line has represented itself well particularly here in the second half now third down short yardage for Auburn big third down defensive stand coming up for the volunteers that's the time remaining 15 and 14 seconds in the third quarter Tennessee trailing Auburn 13 to 10 No further play in the third quarter. We'll take a timeout and go to the final 15 minutes. Stay with us from Knoxville. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Ready to begin the fourth quarter now from our vantage park, uh, point in the new press facilities here at Neyland Stadium. Tim, what happened to Tennessee? They were moving the ball and then the timeout and then the confusion. Just a lack of communication. You don't want to get, get up to the line of scrimmage and be uncertain about what you do, so they called timeout. The only problem was they were still uncertain about what they are going to do. They ran into each other in a big turnover. Third and three, Auburn, full house backfield. The give to Ware. He doesn't get it. Tennessee comes up with a big defensive play. It was 82, Charles Kimbrough, who made the stop. Let's watch Kimbrough coming from his linebacker position, filling in there. Good job by the down lineman. Up back, Curtis Stewart missed the block. Kimbrough nails fullback. And Auburn with a fourth down and nearly two. Decides they can get it. James Joseph, Reggie Ware, and double tight end. running here by Stewart. Kelly Ziegler makes contact in the backfield. Normally he's going to make that stop, but Stewart runs right through it. Again, we've talked about these. Watch, watch Kelly Ziegler here. But he got his head in front. Good position. Now wrap him up. Uh-uh, says Scooby-Doo. You I'm said you on. like the way Stewart runs after contact. Right. There it is. On the first down, 10. Where? Tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Gets about three. Auburn leads 13 to 10. And now they have the ball in this good field position thanks to the exchange problems between Jeff Francis and Reggie Cobb when Tennessee ran into some offensive confusion. There was a fumble. Auburn fell on the ball, and now they've driven it to the Tennessee 27-yard line where it is second down seven. Wagan, the lone split in, comes out to the left side for Auburn. Harris, the fullback. Nice hole. First down. Inside the 18-yard line goes Benson Harris. McDaniel chased him out. A nice hole for Harris as he swept out wide to the right side. Walter Reeves, number 86. Walter Reeves. This is the name of my father-in-law, but this ain't him. Walter Reeves, <laughs> number 86, has done an excellent job blocking all year long for him at the point of attack. And to have a good running attack from this style of offense, you have to have a tight end that can control that strong line. No wonder you're such a big fan of Walter Reeves. That's why. First down 10 from the 18. I've won a fumble. Berger fell on it. At about the 19. Exchange problem there. It'll be second down in 10 now for Auburn. 13.09 to go in the game. Tigers 13. Tennessee 10. By the way, I want to take just a moment and uh, pass along a message from our spotter, Kim Anderson, to his mother, Shirley, who's recovering in Stormont Vale Hospital in Topeka, Kansas, watching the game today. We send our best wishes, wishes along for speedy recovery. Second down, 12. <laughs> Auburn from the 20. Harris. What second effort. He was hit about four times. He goes to the seven. First down, goal. 12 yards. It'll be close to the first down. We may have to. 
to measure, but it's right at the first down marker. Referee Jimmy Harper said no measurement required. It is a first down. Harris, low center of gravity, never lost his balance. That was the key to that run. He's averaged six yards a carry. He's done well when he's been in the football game. Scored two TDs on the ground, one TD and a screen pass. about whether Auburn can go 60 minutes. They're answering that right now. It'll be second down goal from the two Auburn. They lead 13-10. 11.40 to go in the game. Where? Touchdown, Auburn! Reggie Ware with his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. He's been a short yardage touchdown kind of guy for Auburn. line get moving. Boom. John Hudson doing a good job. Rodney Garner, Cyril's over on that side, and then Ware does the rest himself. It's perfect with 11.33 to go in the ball game. Auburn has now taken a 20 to 10 lead over Tennessee. play in this drive is fourth and two. Pat Dye makes the decision to go for it. Kelly Ziegler, big play man for the Tennessee defense. Has an opportunity here as the play develops. Good block by Garner, number uh, 76, Cyril 60. But Ziegler fights his way through, makes contact. If he wraps him up, it's no first down. This crowd comes to life, and uh, the Tennessee offense comes on the field with a real surge. And instead, Auburn gets seven points. Good effort by Curtis Stewart. Cobb at the 10-yard line. Cobb falls down. He could have been gone. It had developed. It was in front of him. He slips on the artificial surface. And I'll bet he wishes it was grass at the 38-yard line. Mm. This wouldn't look good. Good job by Bell. Keith Davis gets a good block there. And now Cobb is in the clear. Looks like his left foot skidded out first, and he went down. Tennessee with good field position, nevertheless, from the 38. First down, 10. Trailing by 9. Trailing by 10. 20 to 10. Francis. Completes to Harper. Broke the tackle. Oh, nice play by the redshirt freshman Alvin Harper, who gets it to the 39-yard line of Auburn. Tennessee fires back a 23-yard completion. Francis to Alvin Harper. Good protection here for Francis. Harper working down against double coverage on the right side. He comes open late. Francis patient enough to scan back and find a split in. He stays on his feet. First down 10, Tennessee. Reggie Cobb. Not much happening. Reggie Cobb has been stifled today by this Auburn defense. 13 carries, only 35 yards for Reggie Cobb. Auburn started only 40 yards away after the Tennessee fumble. In the last two touchdown drives for Auburn, they've gone back to Auburn kind of football. 23 of 27 plays have been running plays. And Tiger, the War Eagle mascot, is happy, I think. Francis. Oh, how did he thread that needle? the official down there signaled it incomplete because Howard dropped it. Yes, incomplete pass. It'll go back to the 39-yard line. That was a dangerous toss into heavy traffic. If he wasn't looking for Howard, Howard's job was to suck the linebacker up and uh, the linebacker played it well. Laid back in, then responded up on the football. So Tennessee will have a third down 10 now. 10-28 to go in the game. Auburn 20, Tennessee 10. Big third down play for Tennessee here because Auburn has been demonstrating ball possession football in the last two possessions. Francis complete to Harper. To the 18-yard line, Cheatham with 
the stop. First down, volunteers on a very big third down reception by Alvin Harper, number 81. Let's watch Alvin Harper here as he works against the Auburn secondary. His own defense finds the open area. And you see Ed Edward Phillips sucked up on that little back that had done a turn at five yards and thereby opened up that area behind him. Those linebackers, especially in this time of the game, have to get depth. Get out of there. First down 10 from the 18. Cobb falls down again. Reggie Cobb facing adversity for the first time in his young career, struggling here in the fourth quarter. Makes you wonder. Now, of course, Johnny Majors believes in this young man, but Tennessee's got Keith Davis, the senior, back there. And Tennessee also has a fellow named William Howard who can play out of the tailback position. So... Johnny Majors gets the feeling that maybe he needs somebody else to carry the ball. You can bet he'll make that decision. Second down, 10, Tennessee. He's going to Cobb again. Johnny Majors has the feeling that Cobb can get it done. A big run for number 34 to the six-yard line. A 13-yard ramble. That time Auburn is bringing the quarterback. You can't see him coming from the left side of your screen. Good job, job of blocking by number 67, Kevin Simons. Charles Wilson doing an excellent job. Then Reggie Cobb does the rest. They spot it closer to the five. First and goal from the five, Tennessee. Francis with the audible. Hand off Wilson. It would have been a touchdown, but Tennessee jumped offside. Once again, Tennessee with offensive communication troubles here today. That'll cost them. And remember, Tennessee is totally out of timeouts. They used all three of them in the third quarter. Illegal procedure, Tennessee. Offensive line just jumped. Looked like ball, but just getting a jump on the ball. Not actually offside, just beat the ball a little bit. An offensive lineman has got to look in when they get down in that closed area because it's hard to hear the quarterback if you're the center. But if you're a guard, sit, get, a, get a glimpse of the ball. Get a glimpse of the ball and you see it go. Reggie Cobb comes out of there. Tennessee goes with the extra receiver. Wilson, the lone setback. In motion, T.D. Woods. Francis. Can he find anybody? Tucks it to run. Gets nowhere. Back to the eight, maybe three. What great coverage by the Auburn secondary of Briggs, Cheatham, Staples, Porter, and the linebackers. Watch Harper, number 81, Terrence Cleveland. He tried to split it up the middle. It looked like Cleveland was open, but he wasn't there. He couldn't get it in. Now, Paul, Auburn drift, keeping communications. Uh, big. Got to turn around, Briggs, and look behind you there, because that's how these guys slip away for six points. Second down goal from the seven for Tennessee. The pitch to Cobb. Nothing happening. Cobb down hard at the eight, as did Francis went down real hard, too, on the pitch. Tracy Rocker took him to the turf. So now it will be third down and goal from the seven-yard line. That's Andre Bruce shaking up on the play. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. to report that Andre Bruce is okay. That's the story of this game. 8.06 to go in the game. Auburn up by 10. Tennessee with third down seven. Third down goal from the seven. Andre Bruce is out of there for this play. That could be significant. He's such a great player. Tennessee six out of 12 on third down conversion. They have Terrence Cleveland, TD Woods split wide to the left. Harper to the right. Cobb back in there behind William Howard. Lofts it to the big leaper. Bad pass. Plus, there were three Auburn players. Everybody in the stands knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I think some of the Auburn fans were going to go down there and cover Alvin Harper. Watch Kevin Porter. Now, this guy's experienced. And he's a first-round draft choice. Before the snap, Kevin Porter slipped outside. Now, he knows what Tennessee's going to run down here. They try to throw it to the leaper, Alvin uh, Harper, but he just couldn't get there. And Kevin Porter headed for the corner before Harper did. This is a big field goal attempt from a difficult angle, 24 yards. Rich missed two in the first half. It's good. 
Tennessee pulls to within seven, 20 to 13, with 7.46 to go in this game. And now the Tennessee defense has its hands full with this offense of Auburn that's full of momentum. Seven forty-six to go in the ball game. Tennessee pulls to within seven on the twenty-four yard field goal by Phil Rich. Borgonone kicks it to Wagand at the two. He's dangerous. He's home. with Pat Sullivan, I know. You're what, not, do you, what do you got on? You're not throwing that, are you? Let me tell you what you don't got on. <laughs> <laughs> Second down, eight, Auburn. Here's Harris, the fullback. Only a couple, they drive him out of bounds at the nine-yard line. The Budweiser scoreboard now. Georgia in a close one with South Carolina. 10-6, Bulldogs in front of the third. Michigan State. Florida State in a close one at halftime up in East Lansing. Clemson laying it on Georgia Tech. Clemson a powerhouse. Texas A&M over Southern Miss. That's a first quarter score. Michigan no problem with Long Beach State. Who would have Long thought? Beach State? <laughs> Pittsburgh Come on. out in front. Syracuse trailing Virginia Tech. And Baylor out in front of Texas Tech. How about Purdue? I don't, maybe they don't want to tell you. On a third down. Here's Harris. He is stopped at the seven or eight yard who just made his 10th tackle of the day for the Volunteers. So Tennessee, with 6.46 to go, trailing by seven, is going to get the ball back. Let's watch Keith here running through. He's glitching from the snap. Taking the outside gap. Great penetration. Makes the stop. Also good contained by Darren Miller, who, again, playing another one of his consistently superb football games. Schulman from his own end zone. He hits another beauty. Andre Kramer is going to go back to his 42. Nice move, but he gets nothing. I think they'll say his forward progress took him out near the 44. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Well, this is the kind of ball game we expected. A great defensive struggle. It's 20 to 13, 6-12 to go in the game. Tennessee trailing. Auburn with a great defensive team, and Tennessee trying to get back in here. Francis. He's going to lose about one after he struggles forward again. Alvin Mitchell with the play. And you cannot say enough about the defensive backfield of Auburn and these linebackers who are covering a less than bumper crop of Tennessee receivers. You know, Tennessee has become known almost as wide receiver university, but not this year with the loss to injury of Anthony Miller. And these uh, Auburn defensive backs have won that war so far. And it's nice playing, uh, trying to cover these rascals, playing in the secondary for Auburn, because they get such good pressure. Reggie Cobb finds a little hole. Gets it up near midfield, but it's going to bring up third and long yardage. That was second down 12. They'll spot it at the 48-yard line. So it'll be third down six. Now, Johnny Major's offensive club has had communication problems here, Tim. What kind of call do you see on a third and six at midfield against this Auburn defense? Well, they're going to throw the ball. They're trying to move the pocket around. They're trying to move that focal point around to the Auburn defensive lineman and Andre Bruce can't just load up and come after one spot. Francis, quick toss, complete. 
to T.D. Woods for the first down. To the 44 nine-yard gain. Excellent job there by Woods. When he catches the ball, he doesn't have it. Little quick hitch, pop, sits down, waits. Defensive back closed, and he got the first down. Portland couldn't get there in time. Neither could Eric Ramsey. Ramsey was the nickel back in that situation. Expecting Tennessee to have to throw it. First and ten volunteers at the 44 of Auburn. 437 to go in the ball game. Charles Wilson gets inside the 40 to about the 39-yard line. The senior pullback for Tennessee. Clock down to 426. Tennessee trailing by seven. Remember, the Volunteers have no timeouts remaining. They used all three of them on what appeared to be communication difficulties. In the third quarter, two times Francis called timeouts to come to the sideline. And one time, Randy Sanders, holding for a field goal attempt, had to call a timeout because the Volunteers didn't have the right situation personnel-wise on the field. Second down four, Francis. Under pressure. Cobb. First down. To the 27-yard line, Tennessee keeps the drive alive. Alvin Briggs, Edward Phillips combining on the stop for Auburn. It's the second time we've seen the screen from Tennessee. And said before this is one of the best screen teams in america their linemen do a nice job getting out in front and then making it count oftentimes you'll see uh, linemen as jeff francis views the situation you see linemen just getting downfield and not getting anything accomplished reggie cobb to the 24 yard line give him about three that time tripped up by robert goff number 98 cobb with 58 yards on 18 carries today and Speaking of Jeff Francis, he's 11 of 17 for 148 yards, one interception. Let's call it second down seven. Besides those statistics, he's had three or four scrambles for critical first down, so he's had, a, had an excellent afternoon. Play fakes the Cobb under pressure. It's complete to the fullback who dives forward close to the first down marker it'll depend on where they spot the ball when his knee went down and from the preliminary indication it's going to be inches short of the first down the ball needs to cross the 17 yard line to be a first down that's on the opposite side of the field from where the ball is and you see the third down marker that's accurately where the ball is spotted so here it is third down less than a yard volunteers trailing by seven 255 to go in the game the 240 pound Tennessee fullback he ran behind a good middle interior Tennessee offensive line surge somebody slow to get up down there for Tennessee Harry John. Galbraith possibly no it's John Bruin the right guard for Tennessee a critical player here the senior 285 pounds you get down here you gotta have a player like John Bruin Todd Kirk and Harry Galbraith, who's an All-American uh, team with John Bruin, probably to create the best three interior set in the SEC. 2.51 to go in the ballgame. John Bruin coming out of there, and Tennessee has now inserted Phil Stewart and Eric Still into the lineup. Eric Still had been playing tackle in place of Stewart, who's been hurt. Still, however, is a natural guard, so my guess is 79 will move to right guard and Stewart up in there to the tackle position. This is first down 10 Tennessee from the 17 of Auburn, trailing by seven. They're out of timeout. 2.40 to go in the game. Cobb hit in the backfield by 99 Nate Hill. talk about a guy that turns the corner in a hurry on defense Andre Bruce gets off the line he just poised up there like a cat and just explodes across is able to turn it down right away I think that's why they like the quick screen on that side he's just so quick sometimes he'll take himself out of the play second down nine Tennessee the ball at the 15 in motion complete 
Tried to get it into the end zone to tight end Nate Middlebrooks. Probably should have had it, but he took a hard shot from 35, Carlo Cheatham. Oh, that was a close one. He had it early. The motion by the back took Porter out of there. If he could have got on the ball just a little bit quicker. Middlebrooks had it in his hands. Good hell on. Good throw over the leaping. Benji Rowan. Middlebrooks takes a shot. The ball falls harmlessly to the turf. With 1.56 to go in the game, it's four down territory for Tennessee. This is third and nine at the 15. Francis again with a check off. Penalty markers down. The penalty marker was in the Auburn defensive backfield, but it could go either way here. We won't prejudge the call. I can tell you this right now, Bob. The fade is no good against Kevin Porter. It's no good. That's they don't the call. It. Excuse me, Tim. It was delay of game. Boy, isn't that something? Tennessee has really struggled with their offense here in the second half. We don't know what the problem has been. They've had to use all three timeouts. They've had two or three miscalled plays. Francis has had to come to the sideline. And the communication offensively for Tennessee, Franklin, has been a problem. It is Auburn, 20 to 13, minute 54 to go in the ballgame. And it'll be third down again for Tennessee, but third and 14 from the 21. Complete to Wilson. Wilson is close to the first down. The spot is critical here. You have to cross the six for the first down.
talked about Tennessee's defensive communication problems. That was, as you said, a clinic on how to run an offensive play against what some people consider the nation's best defensive football team, Auburn. Wagan, a very dangerous threat, is back. He's had a rough day. Auburn, what Tennessee does here. Auburn is set for an onside kick. Tennessee kicker from the 35. He's going to hammer it way over the head of Wagan and into the end zone for the touchback. So, 120 remaining in the ball game. Tennessee out of timeouts. Auburn has all three of their timeouts. It's tied at 20. Tim, you and I said we thought we'd see a close game. <laughs> for everybody here and that's, that's watched the football game. Two great, two great teams going after each other. The benefit that Pat Dye has this year, as opposed to in the past, he can get back in the air. And it's going to be interesting to see if Donahue goes after him with pressure or whether he tries to defend, because Auburn's got a kicker that can kick it a long way as he's displayed today. Berger, 12 of 18 so far today. Incomplete. He tried to get Duke Donaldson. Cedric Klein was covering. Second down, 10 Auburn. That used only five seconds. And Auburn had nothing underneath. They had nothing underneath to draw up Cedric Klein. He just kept getting depth and getting depth, and he put himself in a beautiful, beautiful spot. Berger just had to throw that one out of bounds. Well, are they going to second guess? Let's say it stays tied. Is Johnny Majors going to be second guess for time? So I think that has, that's the intelligent decision for him at this point in the season. Berger on second and ten. A lot of time. Popped in the air. Almost picked off by Kimbrough. It was tipped by Hovannik. And you saw number 82 Kimbrough try to come up with the flopping ball. Oh, my. Decent protection. You see Kimbrough forcing the action. Hovannik. Great job. Beautiful timing. Ball up in the air. Kimbrough there should have made that play. Could have made that play for Tennessee. They got a penalty here against Tennessee. Holding is the call on Tennessee. And I think it was against Lawyer Tillman. Tillman was down here to our side and uh, tried to fight his way up through the defenders. The clock down to 108. That's a first down. It moves the ball out to the 30-yard line. Tied at 20. Remember kicker, Wynn Lyle, has a 52 and a 55-yard field goal today. Berger. Incomplete. Kramer at the 35-yard line. Joseph and Bolton wanted pass interference. They're probably saying Kramer was going for the ball. So did Pat Dye. Watch this now. You're going to see him. He may get there a little bit early. Kramer reacts at the ball being thrown. Boom. He's there. There comes the ball. That was pass interference. Not called. Upsetting Pat Dye. Second down, 10 Auburn. 103 to go in the game. Tied at 20. Pat asking Pat Sullivan what he's got called. Auburn having some problems with personnel. They didn't know who was out there. They couldn't decide who to get on and who to get off the field. And Auburn decides to call timeout. Not significant in terms of losing timeouts because they had three remaining. Coaches on the sideline. Coaches on the sideline were signaling timeout. Duke Donaldson trying to get some piece of attention. <laughs> hey, fellas. Hey, you know what this means? <laughs> Tell them, Duke. 20 to 20. Auburn in Tennessee with a minute three to go. Auburn now down to two timeouts remaining. The play resumes. It will be second down 10 from the Tennessee uh, from the Auburn 30-yard line. What a ball game. Exactly what we expected. The kicking game has played a big role. The defense has played a big role. And turnovers have played a big role. And that's what I think most people who've studied these two teams thought this game would come down to. And since all of those areas have balanced themselves in one sense, we have the 2020 tie. And again, both of these teams 
at times could have gone down the chute. They could have folded, but uh, Auburn got behind for the first time. They've behind, been behind all year, and man, they march the ball 80 yards and score a touchdown and just uh, show the volunteers that they came to play. Tennessee at that point could have gone down, but they didn't. They fought their way back. Now, with a minute three to go, second down 10 Auburn from their own 30. There are two timeouts. Auburn has plenty of time if they can move the ball successfully. Berger, incomplete down at the 45-yard line, intended for Duke Donaldson. Hovannik applied some good pressure on Berger that time. 59 came in on Jeff Berger, possibly forcing him to throw the ball just a little bit. And that's the pattern that won Benny Testaverde the Heisman Trophy. They ru they're running out the cornerback. They're running out the cornerback. They're bringing the slot in the flat. But a good job of coverage. There just was no place to put that ball for Berger. Hovannik was coming like a steam engine, and Berger never even considered it. 57 seconds remaining in the game. Third and 10, Auburn. Berger calls timeout. And there's a couple of things that could be going on here, Bob. Uh, Defensively, you make substitutions often based on the personnel in the game offensively. So if you see three receivers in the game, uh, you're going to send in five defensive backs. What's been happening is Auburn has been holding people before they send them to the sideline. So they're not sure whether it's going to be three wide or whether it's going to be a regular set. And uh, thereby causing a problem for the Tennessee coaches trying to make a decision. Pat Sullivan in the orange jacket talking to Jeff Berger. Pat talked about coming back to football after being in business, and he said, you know, the bottom line is just that there's nothing that can replace that Saturday afternoon feeling. I mean, you can walk in anybody's boardroom, and it's just not the same. And he, he, uh, he complimented his wife, uh, Jeannie, on being supportive and turning him loose to go back to doing what he really always wanted to do. Had the inclination to be a coach after he completed his pro career, but didn't want to make the sacrifice in terms of his family. Now, if you're Tennessee, do you lay back and, and play prevent on this? It's third and ten. It's at the Auburn 30 with 57 seconds to go. Or if you're Tim Donahue, who do you send them? Well, being as slow as I am, I get my linebackers out of there. I go ahead and make them complete the pass in front of them. Let's see what Tim, Tim's going to do. He's playing man under. It's complete to Donaldson, out to the 42-yard line, first down. That'll stop the clock with 56 seconds. Excuse me, 50 seconds left, 12 yards on the pass reception. See, Auburn called two plays in the hook. They played two deep man under, so if the guy gets clear going across the field, he's going to keep on running. There may be no one there to tackle. Complete again, this time to the 46-yard line, and the clock runs now at 40, 39, 38, and counting. Auburn up over the ball, clock still running. Auburn has one timeout remaining. They're electing not to use it here. 29, 28, there you see it in the lower right. Berger, plenty of time, complete to Bolton. Broke the tackle, got the first down. Now, they're going to spot it at the 42-and-a-half-yard line, 19 seconds remaining in the game. That first down stops the clock. Anything inside the 40 will put Win Lyle within field goal distance. The 40-yard line is a 57-yard field goal if he kicks it from the 40. But that's the line of scrimmage. That'll give you an idea as to how close Auburn is to the Win Lyle field goal range. Auburn uses their final timeout. 19 seconds remaining, and it's tied at 20. Now, if you're Tennessee, Tim, because they're starting to penetrate the field goal range, do you have to change your line of thinking here defensively? I think you do, and I think you have cornerbacks that can cover. I don't think that's the problem, and uh, I don't think that Auburn's going to try to throw it up over the top, so you have to be more concerned, really, about the Walter Reeves and about the running backs. James Joseph is the guy that catches the ball best come out of the backfield. I wonder if Wynn Lyle, 18-year-old freshman, 19 years old, excuse me, from Auburn, he's a hometown boy, walked on, got the kicking job. He's number six on your right. He kicked a 52-yarder. He kicked a 55-yarder earlier. You can see the concentration and the mind game that's going on with that kicker. That young man is going to be possibly attempting a game winner in front of 93,506. 
but now it's first and ten from the Tennessee 43. 19 seconds to go in the game. Auburn out of timeouts. Tennessee four-man rush. Berger. Wigan catches it at the 33-yard line. Clock down to seven seconds. Call it's ticking. They're out of timeouts. The clock is down to zero. This game is over. Auburn out of timeouts. Could not get the ball snapped quickly enough. And Tennessee, unbelievably, does not have to see the final play. Auburn could not do anything in terms of getting the field goal unit in because they were out of timeouts. Berger, obviously, at least obvious to me, wanted to get the ball, throw it out of bounds, perfectly legal, stop the clock, bring in the kicker. They couldn't get it done. The clock ticked down, and 